Good afternoon. I'm Angelica Haggart and you're watching Mediaplex Live at One. After it was taken down 10 years ago, the steeple from St. Anne's Parish has been put back atop the church. Reporter Lori Harrison went to see this Tecumseh landmark reinstalled. No matter where you are in Windsor, Essex, there is always a recognizable landmark that helps you gauge your location and how far until you reach your destination. For many who grew up in Windsor, Essex, spotting the steeple of St. Anne's Parish in Tecumseh became a beacon, visible from neighboring municipalities. Ed Reno, a member of the fundraising committee, explains the significance of this piece of architecture. People that have, have looked at that steeple for years, airline pilots used to use it as a guide coming into the airport. Um, people out in the county use it as a guide to come to Decumsee. Uh, so it's really important to get it back up. For the past 10 years, the skyline of Decumsee, especially coming from E.C. Row, was altered when the beautiful glow of the steeple went out after being taken down for safety concerns. It's been down for 10 years. It came down in 2007, October of 2007. So it's exactly 10 years. So that's why it's exciting now to have it to go up. This morning, the newly renovated original steeple built by the hands of hard-working relatives and ancestors more than 100 years ago, was once again placed proudly on the top of the historical St. Anne's Parish. Everything you see is the original, and there are some major repairs that had to be done. Uh, underneath had to be, wood had to be replaced in certain spots, but the majority of it is intact. Reno is optimistic that their fundraising efforts for their Aspire for the Future campaign will bring in much needed funds to pay for the resurrection of the steeple and the remaining repairs that need to be done around the parish. It's a benefit to not only just Tecumseh, but it's a benefit to the whole county of Essex and the city of Windsor. Uh, when they see that lighting, they can see it for miles and miles. Reporting from St. Anne's Parish, I'm Lori Harrison. It's Tech Week in YQG. Coordinated by WeTech Alliance and Windsor's Chamber of Commerce, the week of events began yesterday morning with a panel and show. Sanjay Maru stopped by to tell us more. The Komodo Club is celebrating the hosting of some of the biggest tech giants in the world. The Windsor Essex Chamber of Commerce and WeTech Alliance collaborated to bring in executives from GM, IBM and Amazon to discuss some of the latest technology trends. The show is one of many events being hosted during YQG Tech Week, a five-day event which promotes and celebrates Windsor's tech community. Chamber President Matt Marchand says that companies in both the public and private sector need to become technology-oriented whether they want to or not. Today's event was about where we're going, how fast we're getting there, and how best you can use technology to leverage your organization. Again, whether in the public sector, private sector, not-for-profit, whatever you're doing, Technology is coming your way. It's coming very quickly. It's a great opportunity not to be feared, but again, uh, to, know, to know what's happening, how to take advantage of it and, and participate with it. The event also saw tech-based organizations from across the globe host interactive booths to reach out to the public. The main topic of discussion was artificial intelligence, including virtual reality and robot assistance. The St. Clair College Information Technology Club, one of many being showcased at the event, is highly appreciative of the opportunity to connect with fellow members of the tech community. Bringing everyone, these guys who usually are just behind the scenes, bringing them somewhere where they can meet people in the industry is absolutely incredible. Um, this opportunity isn't something that comes by here like that often, so for we Tech to bring this in is absolutely incredible. Plans are already in motion for next year's YQG Tech Show. For Mediaplex News, I'm Sanjay Maru. Hundreds of people walked, ran, and wheeled through Essex as part of the Jingle Bell Run. Proceeds benefited Community Living Essex County. Lori Harrison reports on this festive annual event. Antlers, jingle bells, and elf ears? If you got them, flaunt them. Hundreds of jolly participants did just that this past Sunday. Striped socks, red hats, and enthusiastic faces trimmed the starting line at Ken Knapp Ford on Talbot Road in Essex at the 23rd annual Jingle Bell Run, Walk, and Wheel in support of Community Living Windsor, Essex. Tony DeSanti, Manager of Community Relations for Community Living Windsor, Essex, explains why it has been such a success for the past 23 years. People come to the event and they realize there's a lot of value to it, not only providing you know, support to Community Living Essex County uh, in participating, but also in the fact that uh, I think we do a great job here. We have a great group of volunteers. They pay their fee, they get fed, they have uh, a great time, they get into the spirit of Christmas. 
Um, there's some prizes that have been given away. Everybody gets a medal, and it's a great value for family to come out. So I think that the word gets out, and that's why we've been around for so long. Community Living Windsor-Essex supports nearly 700 individuals living with intellectual disabilities throughout the seven municipalities of Windsor-Essex. Events like this help fund those programs. We like to um, support community living. That's the biggest thing. It's a big part. Um, my brother's involved with community living. And we love to run and be active as a family. This event has raised thousands of dollars for Community Living Windsor-Essex for expenses associated with their programs is essential to kind of fill in the gaps. Uh, could be day programs, could be, um, you know, uh, uh, going out into the community. Community Living Windsor-Essex not only provides programs for individuals with intellectual disabilities, they also give back to the community in a number of ways. The people we support are out volunteering, Meals on Wheels, um, the Great Ride for Cancer. At the end of the day, the real winners from this race are the individuals supported through the programs offered at Community Living Windsor-Essex. I'm Lori Harrison. Dad, On November 4th, a fire devastated Lakeshore Academy of Fine Arts home at the Urban Fieldhouse. This new community theater space experienced heavy smoke and fire damage. This Saturday, the LAFA team is coordinating Operation Clean Sweep. The rebuild effort is from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on November 18th. Anyone is welcome to attend, bring tools, gloves, and friends. The United Nations have called for a worldwide truce during the Peo Chang Olympics. The Olympics are just 85 days away. In other Olympic news, Calgary voted on Monday to stay in the bid to host the 2026 Olympic Games. City administrators are asking for up to $2 million to continue work on developing the bid. The IOC now requires bids to be submitted by January 2019, significantly shortening the time frame for the committee in Calgary to be formed. Upper Stage is producing its third annual fundraising play called The Gift of the Magi. Sanjay Maru interviewed two of the actors to find out more. Brad, let me start with you. You're one of the directors on this play. Tell me a little bit about what the play's about. Okay, um, The Gift of the Magi is um, written by John Jory. Um, this play kind of takes place back in the early 1900s. Um, it's uh, a great Christmas play with not so great circumstances. Um, back in the day, a lot of people didn't have any money. Um, so uh, the play kind of starts out with um, myself, uh, I'm actually acting in the play as well, um, introducing the two main characters. Um, they fall in love and um, the rest is kind of history from there. So. And Katie, you're one of the main actresses in the play. Tell me a little bit about your background in acting and how you got involved in this play. Sure. So back in high school, back in Philly, I was in about 11 productions and we also did competition and I won Best Actress at that competition back at the Bucks County Playhouse. And um, yeah, so it's been really, really good. We've had a lot of fun and it's been a blast. And Brad, let me ask you, whenever you go to a play, you know, there's always a lesson that you learn when you come out of watching it. What should audiences expect to learn from this play? Well, the typical Christmas story. Um, you know, Christmas is not about um, getting, it's about giving. Um, and this story is the ultimate gift. Um, two people that don't really have anything, they love someone very much and they want to give them something very special and they don't have the money to do it. So they have to sacrifice um, personally and um, to give their love um, something very special and all the proceeds from this play going to Windsor Life Center. Katie, I understand you work at Windsor Life Center. Tell me a little bit more about that charity. I do. So Windsor Life Center is a six to 12 month residential recovery home for women recovering from drug and alcohol addictions. Our mission is to save lives and change families. So not only do we help women in their walk towards sobriety, we also want to prepare them for after their program and success, whether it be family, the workplace, or any path they may choose. Awesome. Katie and Brad, thank you so much for joining us. The Gift of the Magi runs November 24th to the 26th and December 1st to the 3rd, and you can get tickets at WindsorLifeCenter.com. A piece of art by mysterious graffiti artist Banksy is on display in Windsor right now. The piece arrived yesterday morning and will be here until the end of the week. You can check it out at the Wolfhead Distillery on Howard Avenue. Now for a look at the weather. Today we have a chilly high of 7 with light rain and grey skies. Tomorrow we'll see a mix of sun and clouds with a high of 6 and on Friday a high of 6 as well with a high chance of showers. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Angelica Haggart and you've been watching Mediaplex Live at 1.